if you read the Holy Bible very carefully, especially the books of the minor prophets, from the book of Daniel right up to the book of Malachi, they are called minor prophets not because they are of any lesser importance, but because the messages that they give are very short, just like me, short. My other respected men of God are much taller. So, short messages, but if you read them, they will scare the daylights out of you. Because from the book of Jose, right up to the book of Malachi, you don't find any good messages there. You'll only find words of warning and words of admonition. But you'll also find promises, sp spies here and there, all throughout their books. Those promises of good blessings from God are in answer to repentance or to a nation turning around to the living God. So that was their task. And every prophet who ever appeared in the history of Israel, you'll always find them bringing words of warning, words of admonition to stir a nation back to righteousness so that it will be in right standing with God. You know, among all the prophets in the Bible, the one that most people like the most is Isaiah. Because the entire book of Isaiah is full of loving, kind words, full of words of encouragement, full of words of consolation. However, if you read them very carefully, especially the first 30 chapters or first 40 chapters, they too are full of warnings, full of admonition. So likewise, I bring you. So by, by now you should know what I'm going to speak. You know, yesterday, at about 11.30 at night, as I was waiting on God, when I bowed my knees to pray, I saw the Lord Jesus appear in my room and this was what he spoke. And I'm going to quote to you as exactly as how I receive it from the Lord. Tell them that I will visit them with an iron hand to judge and punish if the nation votes for same-sex marriage bill. Now I know that you are at a crossroad, right? In fact, you are in a balance. You can tip for righteousness or you can tip for unrighteousness. You can tip either way, you can swing either way. That's where you are right now, at a crossroads. And I have read something about that, what the plebiscite that you are going to go for, but I've never paid much attention or delved deeply into what exactly is the issues in this nation but this is what the Lord said tell them I will visit them with an iron hand to judge and punish if the nation votes for same-sex marriage bill 
so which means it's not just the voting is the result of the vote if a large majority has voted for saying yes then it becomes a law right your parliament will pass a bill saying now same sex marriage act is approved and not only the secular justices or marriage registrars are anxiously waiting to conduct same sex marriage there are some churches who are also very anxiously waiting to be the first person to conduct or marry a same sex partner See that is a worse disgusting act that can be conducted or done in the name of the Lord Jesus. See when a minister conducts a wedding the couple stands before him he stands by the pulpit and in the name of the triune god in the name of the lord jesus is going to pronounce them man and wife that's what they usually do right now instead of a man and a wife there's going to be a man and a man and a woman and a woman so he's going to stand here and say in the name of the triune god i now bless you man and man a woman and woman that's what he's going to do and in the name of the lord so you are going to take the name of the lord in vain and you are going to pronounce a benediction the blessings or the word of blessings that will come out of the lips of a minister in it will be words of blessings if you read numbers chapter 6 verses 22 to 24 the lord god through the prophet moses gave a command to aaron how he should bless the children of israel and the command was as soon as aaron speaks those words those blessings will come upon the children of israel so that is the vested authority on the priest because of the anointing that's upon his life when he speaks a word of blessings the word of blessings comes out of his mouth as the lord will bless a couple so here you have a gay hearted priest see a, a minister may not be a gay externally but if you approve such a thing you are a gay in your heart you are not a gay externally you may you may be a good husband with a good wife but for you to say yes for you to say it's okay this is okay this is just an alternate lifestyle if you say that your heart is a gay heart your mind is a gay mind so as he thinketh in his heart so is he so as you think in your heart then you become a gay you may not be physically but in the eyes of god when he looks at you he sees you as a gay person you know when the lord jesus christ was so explicit to say if a man looks at a woman and lusts after her in his heart this it's not just looking because when you walk pass by you are always looking 
even when I stand here, I'm looking. Looking is not the problem. Is what happens after the looking. What is the result of the looking? When you lust in your heart, you are an adulterer. You may not have done it in the flesh. You don't need to commit adultery in the flesh. You have already committed adultery in your heart. In the same manner, when you lift up your hand to say yes and amen, to vote for same-sex marriage or gay rights, then you have become a gay in your heart and your mind. Now, why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Among the many nations that have existed in the face of this world, the most famous nations for gays, we, as we all know, is Sodom and Gomorrah. Another word for homosexual people is a sodomite. Or the, the act of homosexuality is also called sodomy. Now where do we get all those words from? Right from the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? If you read Genesis chapter 18 verse 20, the Lord God said, And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, the cries that came from the land was very great and grievous in the years of the Lord. Now that's what God said. Now when the two angels that were sent to spy out Sodom and Gomorrah, when they came into the land, now this is what they said. For we will destroy this place because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. The land has been crying out to God because of the grief, grief and great sins in the land. Now, besides a, a gay man having relationship with another gay man or a lesbian woman having relationship with another lesbian woman, what is so great or so grievous about Sodom and Gomorrah is that innocent people were brutally raped. See, if you look into Genesis chapter 19 very carefully, you will find that not every single person in Sodom and Gomorrah were a gay. There were some straight people. There were some innocent people. A good example is the family of Lot. We know that Lot was a honest, God-fearing man. So was his wife. Not only that, he had two virgin daughters. So they were unspotted. They kept themselves clean from all the sexual defilement in the land. So just like them, there were many, many innocent people in Sodom and Gomorrah who were brutally molested, brutally raped and brutally taken advantage of. Now this was a revelation from the Lord but when I was looking through the scriptures in different translations of the Bible I was very surprised to find that it is also written in the scriptures like that. In Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 and 21, in the, the message translation of the Bible, it says like this, God continued, the cries of the victims in Sodom and Gomorrah are deafening. 
the sin of those cities is immense i am going down to see for myself see if what they are doing is as bad as it sounds then i'll know now look at the first sentence it says the cries of the victims if they are all consenting partners they will not be victims everybody agrees to be a victim you are not a consenting partner so your rights are violated your physical body is violated so they were not only committing fornication among themselves they were also brutally abusing the innocent they were brutally raping molesting even killing you know today it is very common to read that when a young girl is raped many a times she is also killed do you have that problem in your country we have that in india i used to wonder why do this rapists kill this young girls no they have already raped this girl at least they could have just leave them alone and as i pondered this is the thought that came to my mind i may be right i may be wrong this is not a revelation this is just my assumption could it be that these girls or these innocent ones are killed so that they will not report or testify against their rapists a rapist wants to escape the law so to kill their victim is to silence the evidence and now look at the attitudes of the people in sodom and gomorrah genesis chapter 13 verse 13 says but the men of sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the lord so not only were they wicked they were also sinful now i would like you to also take note of all these all these pointers that i'm sharing with you and to check it against the society in australia you want to check and see if there is a parallelism between what happened in sodom and gomorrah to what is happening in australia you want to check them if they all tellies or a majority of them tellies then you will know what is your fate as it came upon sodom and gomorrah so they were very very filthy and wicked what does that mean they were men was fornicating against men now that we know it's called in our language today homosexuality not only that do you want me, do you want me to be very candid and real or do you want me to just hide something so so as to appear politically correct do you want me to lay it as it is all right now i'm going to share with you very candidly what god showed me last night about the situation in sodom and gomorrah why they were so wicked and evil in the sight of god so much so that he had to destroy that entire people group they were fornicating man with man and woman with woman and the gross sin you know i'm i'm very very hesitating to share with you because it is really really gross i not only heard this from the lord but in a vision i saw last night this ex that the people in sodom and gomorrah did it is too gross to even 
say it in public they were eating and drinking the male semen and offered them as a drink offering to demons you know this is something which is very very true even in modern world today that the male seed and the female seed are important ingredients in demon worship they are offered as a sacrifice to get powers from the demons and many many god men of various other religions they became god men with various powers because of this act that they do most of them you'll find are always single see it is forbidden for them to have a normal family life and then they offer their male seed as an offering unto these gods see there is life in the male seed and there's life in the female seed so you're taking that life and you're offering it it is like offering a baby as a sacrifice the only difference in this case is that which comes out of the male body or female body without mixing together with the male ovu or male sperm and a female ovu it remains pure on its own so that which is offered as a sacrifice to these demons are an un diluted unadulterated sacrifice so it's a pure sacrifice of high power and that results in the god men being endowed with powers from the evil one you know when my when my father was a hindu priest i remember I was very small at that time. I used I used to remember seeing him that when he came back home after his work he had a normal job as a mailman and all his spare time he devoted himself as a priest. He prayed very ardently every day for several hours every night from about 7 in the evening right up to about 12 or 1 or 2 in the morning i see him stand before this box of our altar and before the idols and he'll just chant the prayers over and over again for hours then after about 40 days he received what i would call today the baptism of the evil spirits just like we received the baptism of the holy spirit he received the baptism of the evil spirits and the spirits came upon him and endowed him with the gift of prophecy with the gift of healings and the gift of working miracles and i was an eye witness to all this you now when demon possessed people those hindus those muslims and the buddhists they come he will just lay his hands and cast those demons out and when they are sick they come to him he lays his hands under the inspiration of those evil spirits and they are healed and when they come with a problem to seek an answer from god like seeking after medium he'll go into this trance and then speaks in strange language like how we would speaks in unknown tongues and then he gives them a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge i have seen this with all my eyes let me give you one very good example When I was 12 years old I prayed to the gods in our home I prayed that if I pass in my exams I would fulfill a vow I made a vow to the gods Now when I made a vow no one in our house knew about it I never told anybody my vow it was just between me and my god And after I passed my exams in flying colors like all of us do today 
we make our vows to our the living god after the after god blesses us most of us always do one thing we forget to keep our vows amen everybody see you all are wonderful honest christians so i forgot my vow a few months later one day while there was a ceremony in our house the spirits came upon my father and he was ministering to so many people and i was his assistant priest see you have assistant pastor there is also an assistant priest every priest has an assistant they don't do all the job by themselves so i was his assistant and suddenly you see now he's under the full anointing of the evil spirits he just turned to me and pointed a finger at me and reveal the vow that i made now that is that is what we would call a gift of the word of knowledge he revealed the vow and threatened me with dire consequences if i don't keep the vow so what would you do naturally out of fear you want to keep the vow why christians don't keep their vows because the living good god doesn't threaten you with dire consequences isn't it so now the point is this when my father was been endowed with this powers and gifts from the evil one they demanded a sacrifice from him in return for the powers that were given to him so on the day that he was baptized every year he was required to offer <coughs> blood sacrifice so i remember the very first time that he went to offer the blood sacrifice at 12 midnight he went to a cemetery and this is what he said he took he folded up his sleeves took a long knife and cut his hand from the wrist up to the elbow a big cut and blood came out of his hand and he said to his great shock not a single drop of blood fell to the ground they would come out of his hand and then they all disappear in mid air i'm sure i've heard of blood sucking demons he saw with his own eyes which proved them to be very real so they drink blood not only blood but also this male seed and female seed now this same acts were also done by the false prophets under Jezebel if we read first kings chapter 16 verses 31 to 33 and chapter 18 verse 19 there were 850 false prophets under Jezebel and among the 850 450 of them were prophets of Baal now this Baal who demands such kinds of sacrifices Baal demands human sacrifice and Baal demands this kinds of sexual unclean sexual acts as sacrifices so there were temple prostitutes and there were gay priests so these were all acts were done during the time of sodom and gomora and also done by the priests under jezebel and when you read first kings chapter 18 after the showdown that the prophet elijah had with the false prophets among the 850 of them he only killed 450 prophets of baal he did not kill the other 
uh, sorry, 450, he did not kill the other 400 false prophets. Why? Only Elijah knows the answer. But he only killed 450 prophets of Baal because, I guess, they were the worse than the others. Because they are the ones who promoted lewd, unclean, demonic practices all over the land of Israel. Now, as, as the Lord gave me this message, I remembered about a vision that I saw last year about this time during the conference. So I checked my notes and I looked at this vision that I saw. In this vision, I saw a scene that was taking place in heaven. You know, you read in Daniel chapter 7 that the books were opened and the court in heaven was set. And then in Revelation chapter 20, you will read the books were opened and the court was set. And in Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 18, you will read that a council in heaven was set and the deliberations were made concerning affairs of the nations. And in Amos chapter 3 verse 7, you will read that in the council, the prophets are gathered there and God reveals his secrets to the prophets. And before he does anything, he first shares with his prophets what he's going to do. In the same manner, I saw in this vision the council in heaven and they were discussing about the situation in Australia, a very particularly city. So among the many representations that were made, I saw two angels who were called to testify in the council. And this is what they said. Those two angels, when I saw them, they were identified as the very two angels that were sent to spy Sodom and Gomorrah. So they stood there and this is what they said. When we visited Sodom and Gomorrah, only men were engaged in gross sexual acts. But here, meaning this nation, it is woman with woman, mankind with animals, parents with children, and some grandparents with their grandchildren. These parents engage in sexual perversions with their children as if they were husbands and wives. See, that's the report that's been submitted in heaven. That's their findings. When they went out all over the city, all over the nation, and they saw what was being done. The things that were done publicly and the things that were done in the secret. See, don't ever think just because you are within close doors, close environments, no one sees you. A human being may not see you. A human eye may not see what your left hand is doing and your right hand is doing. Human eye will not see. But the eyes of God that goes out all over the world it sees everything 